What's up Guardians? Welcome to another Destiny gameplay video and uh, in this video it will mark my first episode of uh, my tutorial on how to snipe. It's been my most requested video to make. Uh, people have watched my videos and noted the, the sniping and, and have requested several several times that I uh, do a tutorial on how to snipe. So this will uh, mark the first episode because I think that sniping in and of itself is a is a skill that's it, it takes more than just one video to say here's a quick fix on how to become a great sniper I think it would take more than one video so that's why I'm calling this episode one and uh, the very first thing that I want to talk about is uh, sniper selection I think one of the biggest misconceptions in this game is that a sniper is a sniper a, uh, a sniper is two body shots to kill and one headshot to kill and uh, while that might be true relatively speaking it's not the uh, only factor I mean there's a lot of things that go into the selection of a sniper rifle and uh, I've landed on the longbow synthesis as my go-to uh, sniper rifle and that's because I like the balance between the impact and the rate of fire you know effort eats spears uh, fires more slowly fewer rounds in the mag but it, it it hits like a truck and then on the opposite end of the spectrum you've got Praetis Revenge which a lot of people like because of the high rate of fire I mean it fires like a scout rifle but uh, it just doesn't do a lot of damage compared to other sniper rifles. It's uh, barely enough to kill someone in two body shots. So uh, it depends on what game mode you're playing. I mean, I play a lot of skirmish, so I landed on the longbow for a few reasons. I like the rate of fire. It's not too slow, but it's not, you know, I mean, it doesn't fire like a, a scout rifle. But it's powerful enough, the amount of damage that it does, it's powerful enough to uh, kill someone in one headshot off of a revive. But uh, guns like Patience and Time and Praetis Revenge, while they may fire more quickly, they, um, they don't do enough damage to uh, kill someone in one headshot off of a revive, which is important if you're playing Salvage or Skirmish. That's, uh, if you're a sniper in those playlists, that's an important thing to be able to do because it helps uh, pin enemies down and force them to respawn and not uh, be able to kind of gather themselves again. So... Uh, what sniper rifle you select is pretty important and uh, depends on your play style and the uh, game types that you tend to enjoy. Right here you see I, I got one shot in on the guy and then I, I pulled him to one of my teammates and then quickly sighted in this guy. So one of the things that I want to talk about is um, you need to be able to get to the point where you just naturally when you sight in with a sniper rifle you have a good sort of spatial awareness and uh, understanding of where someone's head is going to be whether they're on the same level as you or if they're up higher you need to be able when you initially sight in just to be relatively close to head level so that the uh, amount of adjustment that you need to do for your target acquisition when someone comes into your sight picture is minimal so you don't want to have to adjust you know for and, and compensate for a lot of space you want to be able to sight in relatively at head level and uh, there are several ways to train yourself to do that one of the things that, that I actually I, I literally did this to help to help get that um, that ability that spatial awareness and that is uh, I'd run around on patrol and I'd find things that were uh, head level about guardian level it doesn't really work with enemies just because they're different sizes and not all enemies are close to the relative size of, of a guardian so I would kind of walk up to something and kind of measure it and see if it's at eye level and then um, then what I would do is I would mark that thing and um, keep it in my mind and then I just run around the area and uh, randomly kind of turn around and try to sight in on it and see how close I could get to that object um, initially so here's a good uh, clip here that just kind of shows a lot of what I want to talk about so I sniped a guy up in a choke point I'm looking up a choke point snipe a guy but I'm not just camping I'm moving trying to be useful to my team so I wrap around super a couple of guys off of Charlie because we want to keep this spawn and then I come back in here to this choke point and look up the alleyway and um, get a quick sniper kill up here but then I'm also zooming out frequently enough to be aware of my radar. I'm not just staying sighted in, so I knew that guy was coming and trying to flank us. And I could uh, prime him with a grenade for my teammates. So I'm being useful, being a team player. I'm watching my radar. This guy pops the heavy. And then when you get the heavy, and you're a sniper, when you get the heavy, you want to move. Because a lot of people, if you're a sniper, they kind of get an idea of, of where you're sniping from. So as soon as they get heavy, they're like, oh, I'm going to go kill this guy. So um, I actually come around this, this, uh, this side flank here and kind of wrap up behind these guys. That guy right there with the thorn was 
uh, trying to get me most of the game ever since I, I sniped him in the very the very beginning uh, coming into this room and uh, since then he for the rest of the game really was trying to make his way towards me time and time again and uh, so I'm, I'm trying to be a little less predictable not being the same place as I was and uh, having a little bit of fun here with super good advice which is a high fun factor on this gun and then I whiff on a super here but I'm trying to defend C I don't want him to get the uh, the nice spawn so anyways this this clip kind of shows a lot of what I want to talk about and it's um, being useful to your team managing choke points being able to sight in at head level and um, and when you get heavy being cognizant of the fact that people are going to be gunning for you and they might want to bring their heavy right to you if you've been sniping so uh, next thing that I want to talk about is uh, the fact that sniping is best used, uh, sniper rifles are best used in conjunction with everything else in your loadout. So I'm using the longbow synthesis. It can one shot a guy with a body shot if, if he has like, you know, a little over half a shield left. If he's got half a shield left, then you can take him out in one shot, which is, I mean, that's huge. That's some great impact right there. So one of the things that you can do is, um, if you prime someone with your primary or with a grenade, then um, you can just switch and get a quick body shot off. You don't have to worry about being super precise with your shot. So snipers are best used in conjunction with the rest of your loadout. A lot of people, they kind of, um, this is one of the problems with snipers is that when people want to try and snipe, they just use their sniper rifle, right? They, uh, they side in with it, they stay zoomed in, and then they just kind of sit there and wait for people to come to them. But uh, I play a lot more aggressive style with a sniper rifle. And so right here, let me see, I switch to my primary when that guy gets close and then swap back to the, uh, the longbow synthesis. And then I know there's a guy back here, so I hop back. This guy kind of camped back on these ruins a lot. And uh, I've got the unflinching uh, perk on this gun, so it makes it so that I can, um, I can uh, still be precise when, when I'm getting shot at. Relatively speaking, it doesn't take the shaking, you know, factor away entirely, but it is a little bit more manageable. And uh, being aware of your radar, see, I'm, I'm using my primary here, and uh, and then I switch to the sniper rifle for some later kills. But yeah, so snipers are best used in conjunction with the rest of your loadout. So don't just kind of sit in the corner. Because you end up being pretty useless to your team. Sure, you might not die a lot, but you're not going to get a lot of points. You're not going to get a lot of kills. You're certainly not going to be um, really helpful to your team, and other than being an anchor for a spawn point unless you die. So stay mobile. One of the things that you need to learn to do is to, to be aware of where the bottlenecks are on any given map. So short as the time here, you see I'm, I'm using the cave quite a bit. I don't know why. I, I, I'll almost never go into that cave. It's just a downright terrible spot. And uh, I try to steer clear of it. Uh, here on uh, Blind Watch, this whole half of the map is a nice alleyway, this nice long sight line with some choke points. Choke points are good because, kind of like I talked about earlier in the video, it's, it's best when you don't have to do a lot of um, compensation for a target acquisition so if you can kind of look into a, a tight alleyway there's not a lot of places that that guys can be so adjusting to find a target in your sight picture and put your reticle on them is much much easier when they're in a choke point when they're in these tight alleyways and these uh, long open sight lines these uh, really favor a sniper and it's not that you're camping you're not being useless especially on this map you're keeping guys off of the B objective and you're blocking half of the map that guys can uh, that guy was red bar if you didn't notice shot him like three times in the head but uh, anyways you're blocking off half of the map that guys can come and take the uh, the C objective and get that spawn point so you can kind of anchor it down so you don't want to be useless to your team I'm coming out here, switching to my primary to help uh, keep guys off of the C objective. Um, so yeah, I, I, hopefully you can get a relative uh, groove down for um, sighting at a head level. Because that, to me, of all the things that I can tell you, and right here you see I, I was under fire and I pulled that guy, intentionally pulled him to that doorway so that I could... Um, 
I could just take him out easily. So you have to know when to run away and know when to avoid engagements and to uh, prioritize engagements and know, you know, which ones you should stick out and which ones you should bug out from. Here, I'm pushing their heavy. Heavy's about to spawn, and uh, I know that as soon as uh, the guy heavy says ammo heavy ammo and bound, the people will come running. So I don't get their heavy, but uh, I do manage to get a couple of guys off of it, so that's, you know, only one guy that ended up walking away from that with heavy ammo, while uh, a handful of my teammates were able to grab ours. So I was being, trying to be as useful to the team as possible, kind of taking a hit. Sometimes that's what it's best to do that. Take a hit by not getting heavy ammo yourself and um, making sure that fewer guys on their team get it so that your teammates can use their heavy pretty well uncontested. And this is the, the last clip I'll leave you with. We just wiped this teammate, or uh, this team. So I figured if they're, if they're gonna spawn on this side, they're gonna come through this window. They always do. So just kind of knowing player habits. And I was, I'm able to uh, snipe that golden gun as soon as he uh, initiates it. But I think the most important thing I could tell you is just practice sighting in at head level so that you don't have to compensate much. And that will uh, that'll serve you really well. Well, I hope this has been uh, in any way helpful to you guys. Feel free to uh, follow me on Twitter. Thanks.